it wasn't like factory work, really. It was more like art, painting those styles. We were artists. The premise of this play um, revolves around three women um, who worked for the United States Radium Corporation. And there were actually more women who uh, worked for the Radium Corporation and they died from radium poisoning. This was in the early days of radium and they were using it for everything from tonics to balms to pills. They were, you know, it was uh, a miracle cure for a lot of things until they figured out how dangerous it was. This is probably the most serious play I've ever done in my career because it's kind of like a documentary style play and like most of the plays that I've been in there's always some sort of like like action or comedy or lightheartedness and there's lighthearted moments in this but like it's it has more of a serious tone to it because it's kind of like a documentary on, on real events and that's what I like about it. It's it's different because it's like telling a true story as opposed to um, all the other plays we've done or plays and musicals I've done here. Oh, it's also different because a bunch of people are playing a bunch of different characters. So putting together the show has just been different. I think this was a learning opportunity for a lot of the cast members and I saw a lot of growth um, in all of them, which was really exciting to see, especially as a theater teacher and an acting teacher. Don't you think we're something that got a big tournament? We've, we've had six girls quit this week, and Mrs. McNeil tells me there could be more. Girls come and go all the time. But it's never been, but it's never been like this. These girls are terrified. We've got to do something to calm them. Let a drinker examine them? That sounds to me like a recipe for mass hysteria. We'll tell them it's a routine physical. He's very driven about his passion, and his passion is just his business. He wants to make money so he can make a living for his family. And I feel like that kind of determination and like drivenness, if that's the word, is kind of relatable in a way. He's painted as a villain in the story, but it was really important to me that he didn't become a villain. How'd I do? Pick the right wallpaper? I don't know. Maybe I'll go look at strikes. Strikes? Hold the dog. I don't care, Grace. I'm just getting married. You're plenty old enough. Tell your mom we ain't waiting no more. We'll just run off. Tommy, we are not running off. We're gonna do it right. A nice church wedding with flowers and music, and then a week at the seashore, just us. And after that, we can set up in our own place. You'll see. It'll be worth the wait. Well, she she starts off the play as like not necessarily timid, but like more listening to what other people tell, tell her to do. And then over the course of the play, she like grows and is able to stand up for herself. And that kind of resonates with me. All right, Miss Wiley. I know it can be frightening. It's okay. Right now I'm more angry than I am scared. Good. You hang on to that anger. Only be sure nobody else can see it. Ma'am? Public sympathy, Miss Fryer. That is our greatest weapon. And the public doesn't have much sympathy for an angry woman. Grace Fryer was not a victim. She was a fighter, and she really fought for what she thought was right and um, really set the stage for many, many, many who were hurt on the job after her. This is a very different show from the past few shows we've had here because I've been a part of some of them and I think with how different it is I think people are gonna like it it's a pretty good show <laughs>